Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we continue to celebrate with great joy the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we allow Him to be born into our hearts and into our lives so that we may, He may save us, He may bring us to light, He may bring us salvation. Let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist by humbly acknowledging our sins and by entrusting ourselves to God's merciful love. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. 
For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and invisible God, who disperse the darkness of this world by the coming of your light, look, we pray, with serene countenance upon us, that we may acclaim with fitting praise the greatness of the nativity of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, the way we may be sure that we know Jesus is to keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. This is the way we may know that we are in union with him. Whoever claims to abide in him ought to walk just as he walked. Beloved, I am writing no new commandment to you but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. And yet, I do write a new commandment to you, which holds true in him and among you. For the darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light yet hates his brother, is he still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother remains in the light, and there is nothing in him to cause a fall. Whoever hates his brother is in darkness. He walks in darkness and does not know where he is going, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Let the heavens be glad and the, the earth rejoice. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. The Lord made the heavens. His splendor and majesty go before him. Praise and grandeur are his sanctuary. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Please stand. A light of revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people, Israel. Hallelujah. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword will pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, we are now on the fifth day in the octave of Christmas. And in our Gospel today, we skip forward to the 40th day after the birth of Jesus, when he was presented in the temple of Jerusalem in fulfillment of the law of Moses. Mary and Joseph, obeying the law, brought their firstborn to the temple to be presented to the Lord. And as they brought Jesus to the temple, the old man, Simeon, who for his whole life waited for the coming of the Messiah, rejoiced upon seeing Jesus because God has already fulfilled his promise. Simeon took Jesus into his arms and blessed God for this gift, for the gift of the Savior, not only for himself, but for the Israelites, not only for the Israelites, but also for the Gentiles, meaning for the whole world. Sa sobrang tuwa ni Simeon, Binuhat niya ang bata at nagpasalamat siya sa Diyos sa regalong ito ng tagapagligtas para sa buong mundo. I think that action of Simeon was significant. 
the act of taking the child into his arms and blessing God for this wonderful gift of a Savior. I have seen that several times last Christmas. I'm sure some of you even did that, or some of you saw that, especially in children. Kapag bukas nila ng kanilang regalo, at natuwa sila sa regalong kanilang tinanggap, yayakapi nila yung regalo, hinahalikan pa nga minsan sa sobrang saya, sa sobrang tuwa sa regalong tinanggap. When you receive a very precious gift, you almost embrace the gift and thank God for the gift. That is what Simeon did. He took Jesus into his arms. He embraced Jesus and thanked God for this gift of a Savior for the whole world. My dear brothers and sisters, Christmas is not just about looking at the baby Jesus in the manger. Christmas is also about taking Jesus into our arms like Simeon, beholding Jesus and asking ourselves, what does this gift mean? mean to me. Sino ba itong regalo ng Diyos para sa akin? Ano ba ang dala niya para sa akin? Sino ba siya sa buhay ko? My dear brothers and sisters, you would understand that I am not talking of something physical or literal here. We could no longer take Jesus into our arms like Simeon. But we could still do that. We could still embrace Jesus. And St. John, in our first reading, tells us how we could do it. St. John tells us the way we may be sure that we know Jesus is to keep His commandments. For whoever says, I know Him, but does not keep His commandments is a liar. The truth is not in Him. Keeping God's commandments is also a way of embracing Jesus. When you say you embrace something, it is not really something literal. Sometimes it means when you embrace something, it means accepting everything. It means believing and trusting. And so embracing Jesus also means accepting Him, trusting Him, believing in Him, and obeying Him. Sa pagyakap natin sa sanggol na isinilang ni Maria, tunay natin siyang mayayakap kung tatanggapin natin ang kanyang turo, ang kanyang aral, magtitiwala tayo sa kanya at susundan natin siya. That is what embracing Jesus means. And so Mary presents to us this Christmas her child, not just to look at or behold, but to also take him into our arms and embrace him, embrace everything about him. My dear brothers and sisters, how are you celebrating your Christmas? Are you simply looking at the baby lying in the manger, are you ready to take him, to embrace him, and to surrender your life to him? 
and to allow Him to save you, to change you, to convert you, to transform you into something better. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, like Simeon, let us take Jesus into our arms, into our hearts, and into our lives. And may we welcome Him with great joy because Jesus comes to us so that He may be born into our lives. Jesus comes in order to bring us to light. Jesus embraces our humanity so that we may embrace Him too. Because after all, Jesus is God's gift to all of us. He is God's gift to you and to me. Please stand. Simeon's sight of the child Jesus was a fulfilled promise. Let us bring our hopes and prayers to the Father who is ever faithful to His promises. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the family of the church may be an example and a guide to the nations of the world in their search for harmony and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may show greater appreciation of our family members whose love we take for granted. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That families who are separated may be reconciled with one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the sick may receive the warmth of love and support from family members, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That eternal rest and perpetual light may be granted to those who have departed from this world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray in silence for our own intentions, we remember the people who requested our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. Heavenly Father, clothe us in kindness and patience. As we grow in age, may we increase in maturity and become more like your Son. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name. 
for our good and the good of all His holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Jose our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him O God Almighty Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever Amen Let us now pray to the Father as Jesus taught us Our, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by the power of these holy mysteries, our life may be constantly sustained through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to our healing rosary for the world tonight at 9 o'clock in our Facebook page. The rosary will be hosted by the community of the Diocesan Shrine and Parish of Our Lady of Mercies in Novaliches. And we will pray the Holy Rosary in front of the canonical, canonically crowned image of Nuestra Señora de la Merced. And so we invite you once again, as we do every Wednesday evening, to gather together as a family and as a community, and together pray to the, the, blessed, to the blessed Virgin Mary to ask for her intercession for ourselves, for our family, and for the world. We also invite you to our New Year's Eve Mass here at the Manila Cathedral on Friday, the 31st of December at 8 o'clock in the evening. The Mass will be presided by our Archbishop Cardinal Jose Advincula. And on Saturday, the 1st of January, our Masses here at the Manila Cathedral will be at 8 o'clock and, and 10 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and 6 o'clock in the evening. All these Masses will be live streamed in our Facebook page and YouTube channel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.